Okay, then. Um, this is uh, David Preston. I'm the technical host for our 2022 AGM. Um, I'll be spinning the slides for several of the speakers, and we want to first uh, and foremost welcome um, the early risers um, who are in tomorrow, the late evening people in the UK and Europe, and us uh, Americanos who are in hopefully pretty much the middle of our day. So welcome to everyone. Um, this is in fact the agenda. Um, John has yet to join us, but um, Howard is on board as hopefully you can see. And uh, mostly he'll be doing the uh, usual financial and membership reports for uh, UK and Europe. Um, John will be on his bended knee asking for articles for the journal. Then Karen will give her North America report. Uh, Michael from uh, New Zealand, who's joined us, will be giving her Australasia report. I'll do a very quick um, tutorial on how to use Groups.io. And uh, that's in particular because I think a lot of people don't appreciate all that it can do and all that it has. And then to keep everyone on the call, the uh, most exciting part is that we've actually started planning a 2023 gathering. Um, we have questions and closing remarks. Uh, please use your um, chat feature if you want to ask a question uh, to any of the speakers. We'd like to hold them towards the end. So with, with all that in mind, I'll ask Howard, in this case, to speak to the UK and Europe. Thank you, David. Can, I hope everybody can hear me. And uh, welcome to everybody. Um, this is the AGM for the DGS for 2022. Uh, we were unable to have an AGM at Williamsburg because the requirement of the charities commissioners here in the UK is that we have a live or digital AGM within the UK each year. So. Hence the reason for tonight or this afternoon or tomorrow morning's event, which we're all taking part in. Um, firstly, I would like to say um, that the society is always owes a big debt to David and Karen uh, for organizing Williamsburg, but also for the technical support um david leads us certainly the uk section he leads us very very gently and carefully by the hand through the uh, vagaries of the computer world and for that we are we are eternally grateful absolutely <clears throat> um the society continues to thrive it's it's very pleasing to see in a in a changing world how uh, how the DGS continues to uh, forge its way ahead. DNA is a big uh, aspect, and um, uh, I have had numerous conversations with Karen in particular about DNA. In fact, just a few minutes ago, uh, she was telling me that we can actually link back probably 1200 years to the time when we were part of a clan with the Fitzpatricks. When, though this might not appear to be initially very interesting, it does open up a, a, very, a, a very large field of potential growth uh, for the society. Um, 
that's really everything that I need to say. Um, I do have one or two apologies from people. Michael Neal's and unfortunately unable to make it tonight. So um, we will be taking minutes and minutes will be will be published. I uh, have one or two more people who have indicated that they would like to attend, but um, in the case of one that I'm thinking of, she isn't computer literate, isn't this lady? Uh, a long-standing member. So she would be, she's here in spirit, shall we say, rather than being here on a computer. So if I can uh, ask David to roll on to the next slide, please. We have generally about £6,000 in reserves, uh, which will keep us in bread and butter for some time. Um, again, thanks to David for controlling the finances with regards to the costs of the computer side of the society. Um, he manages to hone things down to the barest of bear and then manages to shave a bit more off as well. So, again, very grateful for that. Um, costs are increasing. Uh, I will be looking possibly to move the society's account in the UK from HSBC as they are starting to charge. Uh, and I'll be taking advice from other family history societies. It could prove to be a complicated exercise uh, and it may not be viable, but it's, um, it, it's something to look at to see if we can save some uh, some money in the UK. But uh, that's everything I have to say with regards to the financials. If anybody has any questions, please put a message on the chat at the bottom. If I can't get back to you tonight, I will contact you in the next day or so by email and, uh, and answer any query that you might have. So thank you for listening to me. Um, as we used to say at school, David, next slide, please. <laughs> well, John is, I, I have sent him another invitation. So uh, I think we all know that John will be asking for um, articles for the journal. And um, it seems that there were some good commitments made at the um, meeting in Williamsburg. So hopefully uh, the folks who attended and said they would send in articles will follow through. Uh, uh, John and the entire society will appreciate it. Can I, can I just add, uh, um, whilst John is joining us, his idea of uh, writing about your famous bit of your family memorabilia, I thought was quite fascinating and I've submitted an article to him. Um, talking to people over the last two or three weeks about family history, the conversation often comes round to one or two particular items which have come down through the ages and that people have a particular connection to, are they? cherish in some way and these are the kind of things i think that john was angling after so if anybody who is watching out there or listens to this later if that could stir a, a memory for them or give them an idea i found it really quite simple to uh to quickly jot half a dozen chapters down about I won't tell you what it is. You'll have to wait till the next journal, everybody. Um, but I'm sure everybody has a particular item that has been handed down to them and they have an affinity to, and that would be very nice for you, for you all to share it with us. Um, John, I know, will be asking you, demanding of you, shall we say, <laughs> some articles um and i know as as david has alluded to 
there was a lot of talk in Williamsburg about people doing um, articles about their ancestry, um, which would be very interesting. The the uh, the ancestry of the Virginian Daltons is 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 really quite interesting. It's it's different to uh, to here in the UK with it being a different country. So um, so let's hope that something something comes of 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 that and of John's idea about an item of memorabilia. I could look around this office and write bits on all <laughs> sorts of things. So there we are, folks. There's some ideas for you. <clears throat> okay. Well, Karen, uh, do you want to brave doing yours? Sure. From your computer. Sure. Uh, we have currently 97 members in the U.S. and Canada, and that includes 12 new members. Um, one of these new members joined us um, as a as a result of the event in Williamsburg because her brother was attending and he talked her into into attending as well. Um, this is um, um, uh, a nice way to, to to keep family members in touch with what's what we're doing and what's going on. Uh, this is our first, that was our first face-to-face -face meeting since 2018. Unfortunately, COVID put a real serious dent in our ability to get together. Um, happily, we had 26 attendees from the U.S. and the U.K. at the meeting in uh, Williamsburg. And uh, if I could just figure out how to get to the next slide, there we go. Um, briefly, the financials for North America, we have uh, about $4,000 in checking, about $1,000 in our PayPal account. So we're doing uh, quite comfortably with uh, $5,000 in reserve here in North America. Uh, the next item I wanted to talk about is the DNA programs. We have 327 members now in the Dalton International DNA Project at Family Tree DNA. Not all of those are Y DNA testees. That does include a few people who have tested for mtDNA. That would be if you have your Dalton connection on your mother's side of your family. And we have a handful of people who have taken the family finder test, which is uh, family tree DNA's version of autosomal DNA. And speaking of autosomal DNA, we have 122 members in the Dalton GEDmatch project now. This is a total of 173 test kits from, because you can submit multiple tests um, for each member. So if you've had cousins, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, whatever, have, who have also taken an autosomal test, please list everyone so that our database is as complete as it can be to allow the most likelihood for people to be able to make a match. And Mark Woolahan continues to guide the DNA projects. He's just not speaking today because he did speak for the gathering in Williamsburg. Different hemisphere to Michael um, and ask her to give a brief summary of the Australasian membership. Now, I'm going to say good morning from tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know whether anybody has the same trouble as I have giving a head around about being in the moment. Here it is. Yesterday and today. Um, Extra tips at the I bottom. I don't know whether you've got to have a scientific mind to recognise that. Now, the G DGS membership in our area stands at 25, 22 in Australia and three in New Zealand. And the majority of our members are on the eastern side of Australia. Now, there are two members 
relatively new members, one Leone, and you would have seen both Leone and the other new member that I'm mentioning here, Steve wrote their um, summary in the journal, which was great to see. Now, Leone has a Dalton with an O and has German um, links. His, her father, her grand, great, great grandfather, I think it was, um, was an English stonemason who moved to Germany and his son, who was born in Germany, immigrated to Australia. So she's trying to find um, information back further. And when she contacted me originally, I suggested she belong or join um, for extra help. And she has also done her DNA. Steve, I'm very pleased to see from New Zealand, which is, brings us up to three. And he is an AU, which is another spelling. I don't know whether any other place can um, boast of having every single member having yeah. different spellings um, in our group. So we've got the apostrophe A-L-T-O-N, the A-U-L-T-O-N, and mine, the real one, D-A-L. Yeah. Now this year, over the last 12 months, I've continued my irregular, I call it, because then I'm not, um, I can respond to things that are happening. Um, I, one of our members I use as our face and I BTC everybody else to retain their uh, privacy. New Zealand is very, very aware of privacy. We have great difficulty finding people because of the privacy laws here. Um, I hope the emails have been useful in bringing to members attentions, activities, as well as Dalton stuff from Australia and New Zealand, and also passing on general uh, Dalton Genealogical Society news. I had intended to be a bit more active in the Facebook page. And I noticed the last time I, when I looked at it, uh, last time was May, so, but we need to keep it up because it's our face to the outside. The groups IO, and I call them IO groups, um, is a really great group. I'm finding it really useful, really useful. And particularly, thank you, David. Um, we can go and find lots of, I shouldn't really call it stuff, but really important material there and links to other things and other places. Now I intend to um, continue on with the newsletter. If people don't want to receive those newsletters, please let me know. Because um, often, as, as David was saying, people have thousands of emails in their email boxes. So if you're one of those people and don't want um, a newsletter, please let me know. I'm, I enjoy and I can. Uh, I hope I will be continue to, to be included in the GES meetings. It's great to be talking to people in, Austra in UK and USA. Now there are three of us in New Zealand and we live comparatively close to each other um, in Australian and um, UK to, uh, and United States terms, not quite so much in England, um, I would really like to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the three of us, so I'm going to try and set that up next year. But I notice there's quite a few members in New South Wales, and they may be close enough to be able to do a face-to-face -face meeting, as Maureen Collins used to do um, in Sydney. So it would be really good. It would mean that it's bonding. It's the term it's it's good corresponding by emails but face to face is you can't replace it now i would also like to encourage dalton stories dalton quests interesting dalton happenings exciting finds and exasperating investigations and i think sometimes if you share your in 
exasperating investigations. It means that other people, it's like sharing your mental health problems, um, that other people feel comfortable with their exasperating investigations. And also after hearing John and Howard discussing a Dalton lathe, I thought, oh, that's a good idea. We may be able to find special Dalton inventions in New Zealand and Australia that haven't migrated north. So that's another thing that we can perhaps look at sharing. And lastly, I would particularly like to thank my fellow committee members for the support that they've given me over this year. And in, as a result, the other members in the Southern Hemisphere. Howard, who collects the membership fees and has taken that task from Maureen. I don't know whether I could have coped without that, with doing that. And this makes my role a lot simpler. Thanks to John for continuing the journal. And I don't know whether other people find that they print it and then read it in the sun. They don't have to have the computer there. David Preston, as we've mentioned before, for his expertise and patience, I might add, um, in the online world. And it's extremely time consuming, David, isn't it? Also to Karen for her DNA knowledge and help, and who with David's help organized the Williamsburg gathering and ensuring that those of us who couldn't attend in person were able to participate in part. It, this um, COVID has had a silver lining in particular on the online world. Hopefully this coming year will be a huge improvement over the last couple of years. And best of luck to all of you in your pursuit of your personal Dalton goals. Okay, I will, un, if I can, unscreen, stop sharing my screen. Right, done. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Michael. Um, and now I'm going to just spend a couple of minutes um, but I wanted to start out with a common understanding, hopefully, of all of the DGS web and social media facilities. And I won't run through all of these um, where he, I think I neglected to mention that not only will there be a recording of this uh, meeting or this webinar, uh, we will also have uh, hard copies via PDF on the famous Groups IO website. Um, and I really wanted to spend just a minute or two on that in particular. And the reason is I think people, a lot of members do not grasp all of what this Groups IO provides. Um, first of all, yes, you have to be a, a member in order to uh, enjoy the benefits, but it's basically a website mailing list and most importantly, a repository for uh, DGS items. Um, if you're a member, you get subscribed. What you may not know is that um, once you're subscribed, if you think you're getting too many emails, um, you can get what's called a digest, which is either once a week or once a month um, or a daily summary. And then you just see the titles of the emails um, that were sent and you can decide if you want to read them all or not. Um, as, as I mentioned, it's more than just uh, a mailing list or a website. All of our journals from 1988 onwards are online. All of the DNA reports from 2006 are online. Um, and obviously the 2022 gathering uh, presentations are there as well. So, okay. Hopefully you all can see that. Um, yeah. When you go to groups.io.com, DGS. When you go there, um, it says log in or sign up. 
um, when you got your uh, email invitation, it was simply adding you to the mailing list. In order to see the items that are available, um, you have to basically create an account on the website. And um, you can either click sign up which will then allow you to create your email account, add your password, um, or if that's confusing or you want to see more options, there's this thing called the wiki, which is basically some help files. And one of those is how to create an account. So basically you go to where I, where I, I showed sign up, you click on that, enter your email address, you click on forgot password or don't have one yet. Um, and what will happen is you'll eventually get an email with your special link to log in. And once you get that, you can start to tailor your options as shown here. Um, you can have individual messages, digested messages, a daily summary or special notices only. Um, and there are a ton more options. But and most importantly, um, all explained again in this wiki page, which finally can be found. DGS Groups IO Home Wiki. And to show you, since since what webmaster is. So let me log in and show you what this site looks like if you've never been here. And I'll just point out, as I said, um, if you go to messages, you can see all of the messages. You can search messages for keywords. Um, there are things called hashtags where you can uh, flag messages for, as we did for the gathering or journals or, hey, I'm stuck and I got a problem. Um, and this, this will help people sort through mail. Most importantly, perhaps, however, are the files section, as I mentioned. Journals, every single one of them since 1988 in PDF format. So, this goes back to the days of them being typewritten, a lot of hand drawing um, to being done. So it, as, as uh, Michael mentioned, it's a really good resource. And David, those, all those journals are searchable. Oh, and, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. And. And what's important for especially new members to understand is this is a compendium of Dalton family research that goes back years. And your family may very well have been written up by someone 10 or even 20 years ago. And you may find a complete family history that takes you back further than your own research has been able to take you. So it's a wonderful resource. Mm. Mm. Hi, can Mark. I just, can I just come in there and say the, the articles themselves in those journals are very interesting, even if they don't relate to your family. There's some, there's some fascinating stories as well as some uh, very detailed research which was done back in the early days uh, and the other thing I was going to say is after listening to Karen um, after being as a Y chromosome DNA person I've leapt across the fence and have done my autosomal oh. so because I'm in the search uh, for a, a Dalton lady quite a way back who had a child. So um, uh, this could potentially open up quite a uh, quite another area for me. Uh, it's it, 
does surprise me what DNA can possibly do for members. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Howard, actually, it's um, finally time for the great reveal. Oh. So um, hopefully yeah. what, what a lot of people have been waiting for, and that is... Drum roll, drum roll. Here we go. <clears throat> we have decided that we talked about this in Williamsburg, and we did vi visit... Lincolnshire, uh, probably perhaps 30 years ago as the DGS, but we've decided to go back and look again um, at Lincoln. And the plan is that we will go on the 4th and the 5th of October, 2023. Um, John and I are going on a scouting mission shortly to, um, uh, to, to look at what there is that we can see. We already have ideas. There is somebody on the ground in Lincoln at the moment who uh, has been tasked with looking at any Dalton connections. Somebody who wasn't aware of this earlier today, but I understand they have now been emailed and they're now on the case. Um, <laughs> Lincoln is a very old city, uh, as you can see from the slide there. The cathedral was started by William the Conqueror. There is an original copy of the Magna Carta uh, in Lincoln. Um, medieval buildings, a fascinating old library. Now, those members who came to Manchester will remember that we visited um, a couple of libraries there in the centre of Manchester. They are, these private libraries are quite, quite an unusual thing in this day and age. Um, but we'll be looking at getting perhaps access to the, to the uh, Wren Library um, just to see just for members to visit, really. Um, the, these libraries tend to, in, in our experience, they like visitors. They like people to show an interest in, in what they've got or what they're doing. So um, that's the plan. We will drip feed to you information as, it's, uh, as it comes back to us. Um, after our visit, John and I's visit in January, we'll, uh, we'll give you some more information of what we've found and, uh, and what we can do. Can you just scroll down a bit further, David? I think there was another slide. No. No, okay. <clears throat> For those people in the UK, you all know where Lincoln is. Um, it's not that far away from the A1 on the, uh, in the east of England. Um, rail communication is very good. Direct lines, uh, direct trains to London, uh, across to Sheffield, Manchester, um, and further north. For those people who may be coming from outside of the country, the nearest airport, is Humberside Airport, which has got very good connections to Amsterdam, uh, the Schiphol, the European hub. So anybody coming in from, say, the States, uh, they could fly into to Schiphol easily and transfer to Humberside. Uh, it's not that very 20 miles away or so. Alternatively, Manchester Airport would be the next option um, and you can get a direct train uh, from Manchester virtually to Lincoln. You may well have to change on the way, but we can advise you about that. Or, or there's also Leeds Bradford Airport. Again, good connections to Europe, uh, good connections to Dublin um, for people flying in from the US perhaps. So it, it's very accessible, very accessible. Uh, so 
there we are that's the uh that's the 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 the, the story with regards to lincoln 2023 so we hope as many people as possible will join us and we hope we can provide some interesting places for you to look at and some interesting things to do. So there we are. Now I understand I've had a message that we, our chat line isn't working for some reason. No, well, working fine. It's working fine. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm seeing messages and um yeah myself mark um karen philippa and karen again so okay i've just had a a, a a written message from john that he couldn't he couldn't get a link um and at the moment as we've said before he's very desperate for articles he hasn't got enough to to put a journal into print at the moment and he would like to be moving on to getting a, a, a journal set so if anybody has uh, something in the pipeline an article or they were perhaps thinking about it and hadn't decided to do it perhaps you could write an article and get it off to john and we'll have something to something to work to to read in during the early part of next year and i just like to say it does not need to be a 20 page article um ready for the encyclopedia britannica um a few paragraphs about um a particularly interesting find when you were doing your research um as as michael said um a comment about a particularly difficult brick wall that you're working with try to trying to break down or um a, a family heirloom a piece of memorabilia that's been with the family um for generations that just a photograph and a few paragraphs of what it is and why it's important to your family um anything to help john fill those pages Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, we have a comment about Leeds Bradford Airport has direct flights to Dublin and Amsterdam. Thank you, Philippa. This, of course, was the route that. Um, that Jen and I took, we flew Leeds Bradford to Dublin and then on to Washington and came back the same way. <clears throat> and Leeds but, Bradford Airport is not that far from us. Uh, and and Philippa lives much nearer than, than we do. And um, from Leeds to Lincoln, how far is that? Roughly. It's the Lincoln is about <clears throat> 60 miles, probably. Oh, not bad and, at all. No, 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 it's not. It's not far. No. Well, any excuse not to have to go through Heathrow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I would think for you, um, Manchester would be because you can get the train from, from from within the airport. Oh, okay. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I'm I will no doubt be consulting you on travel arrangements once we get closer to October. Delighted to be of assistance. Thank you. Okay, um, if if there are no further questions from the attendees, No, scrolling through the, the. I think we've got there. Yeah, I think most most of it was just people saying hello that they were um, on the on the webinar, and yeah. so um, 
unless um, somebody wants to chime in with a question now. I think I think we're pretty much done. One of the things, um, if you're not looking at the attendee list, um, Mark Houlihan is um, on the call. And so if anybody has any DNA related questions, they want to type into the chat box. Um, I'm sure my, Mark would give it a yeoman's ability to answer in semi real time. Thank you, Mark. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. It seems we have concluded business. Um, another AGM in the can. Um, next time, uh, hopefully in Lincoln, we can do this face to face and uh, enjoy touring the cathedral. Karen will car cart me there no matter what for at least an extended stay. Yeah, I'm looking I, forward to that. Yeah, I just I just know she won't be asking me to walk up any any spires. No, I have a terror of, of spiral mm. staircases. Yeah. So and anyway. Um, any closing remarks from the uh, committee? No, just thank you everybody for, for what you do and uh, for the, all the participants who are out there watching us. Shame I can't see you all, but uh, thank you for attending. Yeah, I'd like to echo that. Thank you. Thanks to everyone who tuned in for the AGM and um, thanks to David for helping to uh, make this all possible with the technology. And Michael, you're right. Zoom is the one good thing we got out of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yes, <clears throat> definitely. And, and seeing we recorded, um, those people are going to watch us on recording. Um, we're always here. Email us if you need us. Send us a message on groups IO. Um, yeah, the more we share, the better we all are for it. Absolutely. And everyone have a happy Christmas. Yes, yes. 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 Indeed. Absolutely. Yeah. Indeed. Happy Christmas to everyone. Happy everybody. Christmas and a safe new year. Yes. Mm -hmm. And hopefully see everyone in October in Lincoln. Yeah, looking forward to it. We shall okay. put on a good show. <laughs>